In the previous video, we discussed the different types of questions you'll see on the reading test, as well as some strategies for each type. In the following four videos, we'll touch on some specific strategies for each reading part. In this video, we'll talk about reading part one. Okay, in reading part one, reading correspondence, where should you begin? Well, before even starting to read anything, you should quickly preview the entire part. Let's use an example to show you what I mean. First, there will always be a timer like this at the top of the screen. So I've got 11 minutes for this part. And how about the number of questions? Well, I've got six questions about the main passage, and then I've got another five questions where I've got to fill in the blanks in a response paragraph. So I've got a total of 11 minutes for 11 questions. But if I spend around a minute on each question, that doesn't leave me much time to actually read the passage. Uh-oh. Don't worry. I briefly mentioned the concepts of skimming and scanning in a previous video. Now I'm going to show you how useful these both can be. You may not have enough time to thoroughly read every line of the message as well as answer the questions. Skimming will help you use your time more efficiently. When you skim a passage of text, you read over it very quickly, keeping an eye out for the main ideas. Let's do that here. Remember that the main passage in reading part one is an email message, so there will always be a sender and a recipient. I can immediately see that the author of the message is Teresa, and she's writing to Alexa. Next up, what is the message about? Maybe I can figure this out by skimming the first sentence or two of each paragraph. This is often enough to indicate the main idea of the passage. Okay, let's see. In the first paragraph, Teresa is recalling how she and Alexa met at an event at Teresa's school. This paragraph is pretty short, but we can also tell that Teresa wishes to take her class to the local library. So, Teresa's a teacher. Hmm, so maybe Alexa is a librarian. In the second paragraph, we learn about Teresa's opinion that students are too reliant on the internet for doing research. In the third paragraph, we learn that Teresa wants her students to look at maps and atlases at the library. Next, we find out that Teresa appreciates the resources at the library. In the last paragraph, it looks like Teresa is trying to schedule a time for her class to visit the library. Since she's asking Alexa about this, Alexa is probably a librarian there. Okay, great. So just by skimming the text, I've got a general idea of what this passage is about. Now let's try a question from the first section. Why does Teresa want to avoid the computers? The geography websites are out of date. Her students will laugh at her computer skills. The online games will waste her students' time. Or, she wants her students to focus on print materials. Okay, back to the passage. But where should I look for the answer? Well, I know that in the second paragraph, Teresa talks about how students use the internet too much. Since they'd need computers to do so, the answer could be in this paragraph. Now that I know where I should specifically be looking, I'll scan for the answer. Scanning is when you look for keywords and specific pieces of information in the text. This whole paragraph talks about how students use the internet too much during their research. And one sentence even states, I would prefer that the tour minimize computer resources. The first sentence of the following paragraph also mentions how Teresa wants her students to look at the map collection and the atlases, which are types of print books. Therefore, we can tell that D, she wants her students to focus on print materials, is the correct answer. Okay, now let's look at the second section of questions. Remember that in reading part one, the final five questions will always be in the form of a response to the first message. By quickly skimming this response, I can confirm that this is the case. Alexa is responding to Teresa's email. I've got to fill in the blank for each question in order to complete the message. And remember 
that when you write an email in response to someone, your email is usually sequential. In other words, you typically follow the form of the first email and respond to the other person's comments in the same order in which they wrote them. The same goes for this response. So here, the first paragraph of Alexa's response basically corresponds to the first couple of paragraphs of Teresa's message. Let's look at the first question for this section. I remember giving you a tour, meeting you, helping your class, or talking to your colleagues, and look forward to giving your students a tour. So you probably remembered that as we skimmed Teresa's message, the first paragraph told us how she and Alexa had met at Teresa's school during a meetup event. Therefore, B, meeting you, correctly completes this sentence. In this video, we discussed a number of strategies that can prove very useful for reading part one. Regardless of the topic of this part, there are some things that will always be the same. The time will be 11 minutes, you'll have 11 questions to answer, and the text will take the form of an email and a response. And remember that skimming and scanning can help you efficiently answer each question within the time limit. In the next video, we'll discuss some specific strategies for reading part 2, reading to apply a diagram.